This is the final video in our three-part series on the making of our LBX badges. Previously, we've cut backing blanks and decorative rings using Lightburn, then used Millmage to create and carve two repeat marking jigs. By starting and finishing this project within the same software family, we were able to cut a truly unique design and carve a perfectly matching jig. This is where it all comes together. We're back in Lightburn, and we're going to mark individual names and custom QR codes on each badge using two Galvo lasers. Personalization elevates any project, and Galvo lasers do it at blazing speeds. In this video, we'll show how we use the material test generator to dial in our marking settings, then use variable text, repeat marking, and the create barcode tool to customize each badge. To follow this process for any project, you'll need a Galvo laser, a rotary or repeat marking table, a jig, and a spreadsheet populated with the data that you want to mark onto your items. We used a CO2 laser to remove the white layer of two-tone white-black acrylic, marking attendees' names, and a UV laser to mark QR codes pointing to individual schedules on the backsides. Both lasers required some testing to find optimal settings, and we used Lightburn's built-in material test generator for that process. For the CO2, we were looking for the best combinations of speed, power, and line interval to completely remove the white layer without overburning. For the UV, we started by looking for the optimal combination of frequency and Q-pulse to achieve a clean white mark, then tested speed and interval to see how fast we could go while still getting a good result. Usually the best way to do this is to start with a relatively broad range, then narrow down based on your results, conducting repeat tests until you're satisfied. The ideal settings will cleanly mark your material at the fastest possible speed and the largest line interval. How much you want to test is up to you and your goals. In our case, we were satisfied with achieving a high quality result at a reasonable speed. With 500 badges to mark, any additional incremental time savings we achieved through more testing could easily have been dwarfed by the time it took to arrive at them. But if you're going to be running the same marking process thousands or tens of thousands of times, it pays to test thoroughly. With testing complete, we're ready to import our badge design into Lightburn. We can discard most of this design, but we want to keep the text in the center along with the inner ring, which we'll set to a tool layer. That will be helpful for positioning later on. You'll notice some text beneath the center line. These are special formatting expressions that will tell Lightburn to replace the characters we see here with lines from a spreadsheet. To tell Lightburn that's what we want to do, we need to select that text, then select Merge CSV from the menu in the Text Options toolbar. The percent zero expression tells Lightburn to replace those characters with data from the first column of a spreadsheet, and percent one tells it to reference the second column of the same spreadsheet. Once we've set up our text, we need to load the spreadsheet that we want Lightburn to reference. The spreadsheet must be saved to your computer as a CSV. Any popular spreadsheet software can save to this format. We'll head over to the variable text window. If you don't see it, you can enable it from the window menu. Click the browse button. Then navigate to the location you saved the CSV file, and select it. We can also use this window to test our output, and make sure both our spreadsheet and formatting are set up properly. With the current value set to zero, Lightburn will reference the first row of our spreadsheet. So when we press test, the percent zero text changes to the data from column one, row one, and percent one changes to column two, row one. If we hit next and test again, we're now referencing column 1, row 2, and column 2, row 2, and then column 1, row 3, and column 2, row 3, and so on. Make sure the Auto Advance option is enabled. That way, each time the repeat marking jig advances, the current value will advance as well, and the laser will mark the next row from the spreadsheet. Before moving on to repeat marking setup, there's another adjustment we need to make to our text. You might already have noticed that some of the longer names don't fit properly. To compensate for that, we can select the text and head over to the Shape Properties window. In the Max Width field, we'll enter a value that limits how big our text can get. We chose 31 millimeters to match the width of the center line. The Squeeze switch underneath gives us another option. With Squeeze enabled, whenever Lightburn needs to limit the size of the text, we'll only limit width and maintain the original height. If we disable Squeeze, we'll resize the text uniformly in both dimensions so nothing gets distorted. That's the option we chose to go with. Finally, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees to account for the physical orientation of our repeat marking jig under the laser. 
We'll select our text, then press the comma key on our keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now we're ready to move on to the repeat marking process. If this is your first time using repeat marking, you'll need to click Setup and enter some parameters. The most important thing is to specify the type of external axis, rotating in our case, and the correct steps for rotation value will cause it to make one complete rotation when you press the test button. If you're not sure, check the instructions that came with your device. The manufacturer can provide the value. There are a few other options here that we aren't going to touch. Min and max speed control how quickly the rotary will turn in between marking, and acceleration controls how fast it speeds up. The lower the acceleration time, the faster the rotary is allowed to speed up. You can only push max speed and acceleration so much before you require more settling time, controlled by the pause after move field in the first window. Without sufficient settling time, the jig and objects in it may be shaking while the laser marks, leading to a poor result. For the amount of badges we were marking, it wasn't worth the time to test out the fastest speed and acceleration we could achieve before requiring too much settling time to be worth it. But if you're making 50,000 of something instead of 500, playing around with these values could pay off. The next value we need to set is increment, which will tell the rotary how far to jog in degrees between each mark. For a jig with five slots, we needed 72 degrees of movement to jog from one slot to the next. If you ever need to check your math, you can enter the number of slots in the count field, then press calculate to have LIPR determine the correct increment value automatically. But when we press start, the count value will be used very differently. Instead of representing the number of slots in the jig, it will determine the number of times the laser marks and rotates. With a count of 10, the laser will mark 10 times and rotate the jig 9 times. You can keep the count set to the same as the number of slots or go much higher, as long as you're able to swap in blanks for marked items as the jig turns. With setup complete, we'll use the jog button to get the first slot into position. We want to make sure it's oriented at just the right angle so that our marking doesn't end up slanted on our badges. Then we need to make sure the graphics are positioned properly using framing. To help frame, we placed one of our decorative rings on a badge and enabled the two layers only option. That meant only the circle and nothing else was framed. Then all we had to do was line up the framing ring to the inside of the real ring. With Galvo lasers, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge graphics while in framing mode. Once aligned, it's go time. With the names complete, and the badge is obsessively kept in correct alphabetical order, it's time to place the reverse jig on the rotary, switch to our UV laser, and mark the backs of the badges with QR codes that direct to individual attendee schedules. All we need from the original design is the ring, which we'll use to size and position the QR code. We'll enable the Create Barcode tool, then click and drag to create a QR code that looks about the right size. Our system used a custom URL plus email address to redirect attendees to their individual schedules. So in the raw content field, we'll enter the custom URL, plus percent two at the end, and select Merge CSV from the text evaluation menu. Since the URL doesn't contain any formatting expressions, it will always say the same, while the percent two refers to the third column of our spreadsheet, where we have attendee emails listed. With each mark, the QR code and link will change to direct to a new email address. With that set up, we also wanted to add some text underneath so people would know what this was for. Then we'll select the QR code, text, and ring, and align their vertical centers. From here, the repeat marking setup and framing process is the same as before, and we're ready to mark the QR codes. Once they were all done, all that was left was to glue the decorative rings to the backing pieces, then give them out to our attendees. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Lightburn Workshop videos.